and you really carefully line it up, this is really nerve wracking. And this point is ready to hunt with. We didn't even start the damn flint trip yet. Ready to head out here. Uh, napping stuff. Adventure bag. Looks like looks like it'll flake. Give it a try. Look at that. Some kind of black flint. I'm not sure what that is. I'll keep that though. One for the effort at least. Interesting black flint. I have no idea what that is. I'm gonna have to look into this area and see if I could get a name. This is like a wide, shallow creek and there's a bunch of crows out there. It's a really pretty spot. fish in there. <laughs> so this here is called lady's thumb. This plant here. And it's related to a plant it's called smartweed. And paleo-Indians 12,000 years ago used it as a spice in their food. Peppery. So I have not found um, smartweed anywhere yet. This is still lady's thumb. But when I find some smartweed, I'm gonna try it and taste it. Limestone. This is a good sign, there's, there's stuff around. This is a piece of limestone. And usually when you find limestone chunks like that, there is flint nearby. I didn't sleep yet. It's like five in the morning, six in the morning. Don't really know where I am. Pretty mountains and I don't know. Good I'm not, morning, Sunshine. Uh, <laughs> not lost. Nope. Which was way back? <laughs> so this is literally the only piece on this whole stretch. I walked all the way down to that bridge and the old hotel there. That's haunted, by the way. There's people watching me from the top window. It's empty. Not really empty, but it's empty. Spooky. This stuff here. It's very similar to this, if you look at it. See how the outside's very similar? But then this up here is called, I don't know how to pronounce it, Chalcedony? And that I've not found around here anywhere. So that's a first. Hmm. Cool. It's white. Yeah, it's pretty. It's usually kind of translucent, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, let me, uh, here's another piece right here. This is the, uh, that stuff, though. Let's just check this. Not Onondaga. Okay. I'm gonna take a little piece off. Yeah. 
That's chalcedony. This is almost like a, I would call it like a flint ridge type material, this white stuff. Um, I had a big, big blade of the um, white chalcedony from flint ridge from uh, Nether's farm. And uh, I made a blade for the wood beardsman and gave it away as a, uh, a gift on his channel. Oh, and that's yeah, the, that, that's that, the only uh, piece I ever I ever got of that. It was that giveaway contest. Yeah. Um, where you had Easter eggs hidden. Yep. So this is the same kind of stuff from from that knife. One's in Ohio, one's here. <laughs> oh, I need to sleep at some point. I was just testing this piece because I saw this little tiny shiny. Whoa, hello. Look at this. It's got limestone in it, but it's a lot of flint. And it's white on the outside. <laughs> what the hell is this? Okay. Looks similar to this. This is more crystally. This is fine grained. So there's like a bunch of different stuff here, apparently. Cool. So I lied about this being the only piece here. There's actually a bunch. I just wasn't looking at it because it's white. I was looking for this, not that. We didn't even start the damn Flint trip yet. How does this happen? So, <laughs> anyway, I'm going to go relax. I need to sleep. And we still got a lot to do. This isn't even the Flint trip yet, so. I gotta sleep. I gotta sleep. Danger. Nice water call here. Smell that. What is that? It smells good, whatever it is. I've never smelled that before. It smells what is that? like it's almost like cucumber. Yeah, like a, like a citrus cucumber or something. Yeah, what is that? <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> Did you get vertigo? Yeah. <laughs> I just wasn't, oh. I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> wow. I saw yeah, the that's water a, there and it goes down. That's a drop. Holy shit. We gotta bleep that. Bleep. Wow, you can't tell how steep it is. Blood rot. You see okay. how that limestone is pouring out from the wall right there? That pile? Now the next big flood that comes through is going to wash that downstream. And if there's flint in the limestone, it'll wash out like that. And that's how you find the cobbles and bricks of it way downstream. Oh, wow. That is a straight drop. It looks like a little puddle, but that's... I don't know how to show you how steep this is. So just another pit stop, random stop. And uh, just wanted to show you what vertigo looks like. Vertigo. A feeling of dizziness, a swimming in the head. Figuratively, a state in which all things seem to be engulfed in a whirlpool of terror. I look up, I look down. I look up, I look... I don't think that'll come out on camera how high up we are. Is this shaking? Stop. <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> Bye, waterfall. So I nap this from some of that rock. Gnarly looking stuff. In the wall, huge chunks. Is there? We're still uh, heading to the campground, but I decided to stop here, and I found a what looks to be a giant piece of flint here. I'll give it a test and see how it looks. Let's try this edge. It's not high, high quality, but it'll nap. I'm gonna bring it with me to experiment with. Looks more limestone than chert to me. Okay. This ESO pus, you can hear little bits of it. Little tiny. I'm gonna try cracking it open. Usually if it's high quality stuff, it rings like a bell. Let's see. It smells like sparks. I smell that too. Nah, I'm not going to be able to get into this piece too easily. But there's a little bit right there. Just found some fossils. Is this a seashell? So we're at the campground finally, and uh, Leah fell asleep. We're waiting to check in, and uh, can't check in until two, so I'm gonna go down to the water. Yep, I'm gonna do that right now. So I took a hike, and found this. Look at that. I'm up on a, a big hill here. And I still can't capture how awesome this water is. You can see the rocks under it, clearly. You can't get you can't get the color. It's like neon green, blue, clear. Crazy. That's my lake. But right now I'm checking out a location that might have chert and flint that I could use to make some stone tools. So I just came on this trail here, past these really huge cliffs, and there is some chert up here. Small pieces. That piece isn't so good. Looks like there's just a little bit right in this area. Little tiny things. Gray. Cool. Check this out. See the little shells?
looking at the stuff that was right here. Yep. And somebody's recently been hitting on this, this copper mark right there. I don't know if you could see it. Somebody's been hitting this with a copper rod. There's a few pieces, but I don't really see where it's coming from. It might be under all this stuff. I'm going to see if I can get out there and show you the waterfall. Scan the other side for chart. Possibly there. What do you guys think? Should we repel down from there? Do you guys think? Somebody told me there's there's an outcrop of flint up here. And uh, it should look like something like that, like that little hill with the rock coming out. But that's really covered over there. It's hard to see in there, and I don't really want to crawl through there right now. But um, there is flint here. I mean, somebody was whacking it recently. But it should look like that. It's probably over there somewhere. But there's crazy cliffs right here. Oh my god, the chipmunk. The chipmunk almost fell. Oh my god, the chipmunk. Chipmunk. Almost fell. Whoa, dude, be careful. It's hyperventilating. I him. bet he is. You're okay, dude. Come on. Here. Here, let me get out of your way. No, no, no don't no, go, no, no, don't go that way. Oh my God, he jumped again. Where is he? Is he okay? Know. Get on the freaking ground, dude. <laughs> so that cliff is like straight down for hundreds of feet. Where that chipmunk almost fell. <laughs> Maybe you could see right here. There's um rock face going straight down. Here's more. This is just laying in the trail here. Mm -hmm. So I need to uh, correct something. Usually I say chert because that's the correct term for this stuff. But for the, vid for the video, I'm gonna say flint so that the algorithm picks up that looking for flint. But it's chert. But it's flint. But, but it's chert. But it's flint. But it's chert. Just because I get so many comments saying it's not, it's not flint, it's chert. It's like, I know. <laughs> so right here, there's a dip in the ground. And there is a line of chert outcrops this way. So this might be an old quarry pit. It looks very similar to the ones at uh, Flint Ridge State Park where they're dipped in the ground like that, where they were trying to pull out the flint. I don't know, though. I don't see any leftover rock, but that's really interesting to me. All right, so didn't find too much down here. Um, not really seeing an outcrop or anything. I walked down that way some, and it's just a uh, shale limestone. That way is a dead end, and I'm not I'm not seeing it. So uh, I think I'm just gonna head back to where I was camping. Um, still just relaxing. I haven't started the flint trip yet. But uh, yeah, if uh, if somebody's watching and they nap this stuff in here uh let me know where it is exactly it's probably uh in that brush but uh 
Yeah, let me know. I found one more piece of flint. In that thing. All right, so we saw a um, crazy gorge back that way, right there, and some huge cliffs. Saw a chipmunk almost fall. And I guess that's it for here. So it's a year later, and that anarchist heron is still here. He still doesn't give a crud about human roles. There's an anarchist beaver there too. Yeah, I've learned my lesson about sticking my head in caves in the middle of nowhere. I was reading some of the pamphlets on what to do if the bear is uh, aggressive. thing it said was, don't toss it food. This will create future problems. I'm pretty sure if you're being mauled by a bear, you're not going to be concerned about causing future problems. I'm not an expert on bears, but I'm pretty sure that if a bear attacked me and I had a banana in my hand, I would throw the banana. I'm just kidding. I don't want to read in the newspaper that somebody threw a bear at a banana and got murdered. <laughs> threw a bear at a banana. Throw a banana at a bear. <laughs> and got... <laughs> and got murdered. Don't throw a bear at a banana. If that won't... Do we have bananas? So it started raining at the campsite and they, they actually closed the whole lake with uh, electric storm warnings. They told everybody to take shelter. So I was like, screw that. I'm gonna go look for Flint Creek. So we're at the creek. I can see it from here. How about this thing? Is that limestone? Limestone. Right, I remember it was just like this here. Yeah, just in the cobbles. There's mm -hmm. some. Have you tried a... Did you crack into this? No, I'll try it. I need a hammerstone though. Uh, hammerstone. Like hammerstone. Little guy? like concrete. I can it? feel it's like concrete. How do you know where to approach like to get in? Um, look for something that's hanging off and see if we could knock that off. I don't think I'm going to be able to on this because it's just... It looks very dense. I mean, it's, it's, it's concrete. <laughs> Let's split the hammer stone. Look what it's doing to it. Called it. Jeez. Yeah. Not worth it? No. It's just such a small vein going through it, the rest of the rock is impossible. So in this big rock here, the, the light gray is limestone. You can see those little nodules sticking out? The shiny ones? That's flint. So there's two veins in that limestone 
One is darker, it's very weathered, and the other one is actually not good blend to at all. The lighter, dull color, it's very dull. See how the black is shinier than the gray? The black is better than the gray. If you see the really dull flint, it's not so great. So on my previous uh, flint trip, this is one of the first places I stopped where I found the Isopus. And uh, one of the things I wanted to say about this is if you revisit a place like a creek or a river or anywhere that's moving water, it's constantly turning over rocks and moving things downstream. So it's always going to be different every time you come back. So um, it's just always worth wherever you're at, if you see if you see some in a river, keep checking back. More gets uh, brought downstream and rolled over, and it's always changing. So. It'd be harder to see with this mud on top of everything. Yeah. So I was hoping to find some stuff here. I mean, I found a little bit small and the lightning's starting to come in. So I'm going to get out of here. Let's see uh, how long the storm lasts. Maybe we could get back out today for a little bit. But I'm not seeing a whole lot here. I mean, it's really tiny to begin with. So the weather can't really decide what the heck it's doing. So I brought my uh, rod down here. I'm in a different creek. Just gonna just try fishing a little bit. Maybe look for some stuff along here. That one. That one got one. Got fish. Little guy. What is it? A little small map? <laughs> okay. This chart over here. Yes. Not sure. There's more. Huh. So that's some. There's some. There's some. It's nice out even though it's trembling. And the rain is back.
Here it comes. It's just tumbling out into this riverbed. Here it comes two more. Out of the wall here. Yeah. I don't know if I can get up there. Pretty big. Let's take that piece. You okay up there? I'm good. Can you get down? You good? I think I'm good. Okay. Show off your uh, prize. Looks pretty good. Looks good <laughs> to me. I knew this one was be a good one. Good job, Leah. Look at that. Look at that. That's plant. Not sure what kind of plant. Huh. Cool. Good job. You did it. I'm a mess. Yep, that's plant. Seems pretty hard. It's tough plant, but it's plant. Found a good piece. few pieces, I think. That's also flint. <laughs> this is definitely flint. I'm not going to test that. It's got some damage in there, but... Yeah. Take that. So, we'll take these then. These two are another. go. Look at that. Still haven't started the flint trip yet. Caught two fish. Yeah. Cut some flint. Try a little more. While he's fishing, I'm gonna keep looking. It's like a treasure hunt. It's gonna be hard to see anything because it's all covered in mud. Hmm. Can't tell if it's limestone. So that was not a uh, chart, but this looks like it might be. Let's take a look. Looks charty. It's pretty smooth. It's a big old maybe. Probably. I'm looking, looking, looking. Not really seeing too many things. A lot of limestone. That's about it. It's a really pretty creek bed though. So I'm gonna go a little bit further and if I see anything good I'll let you know. Man, it is peaceful here. So how you doing? Got a few more little nibbles, but nothing's really biting anymore. Really pretty though, kind of came out. Kind of that. Same kind? You test it? No. That is for you to test. Okay. I'll test it. Test this piece Leah found. I do not know. It looks looks like the other stuff, but it's hard it's hard to tell when it's this color.
flint. Black, black, black flint. Look at that. Leah found awesome flint. Good job, Leah. Hey. Oh man, look at that though. It's a good flake. It's a little knife. <sighs> cool. It's so pretty here. Yeah. I'm gonna put this in with the others. Look at that though. Jeez. What is this? <laughs> it smells like mud. There you go. even a, a rainbow here with a bird flying past but I really love this place. Wow. My hook got snagged. I lost it so I'm going to head out of here but found one more piece of trout here. Let's see. I'll show you. Come on. Wow. Definitely church. It's tough. There we go. Cool. All right, heading out. So, still not on a flint trip, but I got like a giant bag of flint. Okay, head to the car. So I was looking around, well, I guess because I was distracted because I was fishing, but I wasn't seeing any flint, and then all of a sudden you're like, it's in the wall! And you're up on the wall, <laughs> like a monkey, kicking the thing and digging it with a stick, and then you throw this giant chunk of pure black shirt flint at me. And I'm like, what? So what are you reading? I think this is the book where um, Dennis Stanford uh, butchered the elephant in Stone Tools. Not sure yet though, but I think it is. Is that where they were trying to test out the stone tools to see how they worked on mammoth? Mm-hmm. Yep, they were using an elephant instead of a mammoth. So I'm looking in this book here and it's showing um, end scrapers, which are, they, they were used to scrape wood, bone, and hides. Now I used a, uh, in my chipmunk skinning video uh, to turn a chipmunk into a, a fur. Um, I used a small one on, on the chipmunk too, um, to scrape the, the fat off and to make sure that there's nothing that will rot on the skin before you tan it. Um, I've not made one of these on camera yet. I would like to, to fill them making an end scraper you know, usually I do the uh, the arrowheads and the spear points, but I would like to get into the other stone tools and the other primitive technologies that was used by uh, people for 12,000, 13,000 years. So you mentioned experimental archaeology, which is uh, what they were doing when they cut up the elephant using stone tools. Mm -hmm. And why would they do that? When you do an experimental archaeology, you're experimenting and trying to find out what these, because when, when you find these tools, all that you find is the stone. You don't find what was connected to the stone. You don't find most of the time, especially in the Northeast, you don't find what the stone was used on. So in experimental archeology, span you're trying to figure out how the stone tool was used in history. So I know, uh, I know an archeologist who does a uh, use wear analysis and if you look on here, you see these edges here 
that ha that are napped, they are flaked. You could say, Ch -ch 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 -ch. so they took an antler and touched that all up to sharpen it. Now the 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 use wear analysis shows where it was used and dulled, like how when I use my stone knives on video, they get dull. You could see where it dulled on the tool, and that helps determine like what it was used for. You could tell if it was used on bone or wood or on meat because a, a meat or a hide will polish the edge whereas a bone a bone will crush the edge really bad and the wood will just uh, add more more chipping and dull it so i think since i found such a small piece of flint um at the creek before that um maybe i will show how to make an end scraper it'll look like that so stick around after after we're done eating and i'm gonna go fishing a little bit i'm gonna drag her down to the lake i gotta go to the lake um after that i think i'm gonna make one of these it's an end scraper now on archaeological sites um especially paleo indians these were really abundant and they really needed these to work they've been to shape their tools to make their clothes and their hides, like heavy jackets and whatever they needed to survive the Ice Age was super important. It's like a multi-tool. So um, I'm going to show you how to make that, I think. So stick around. After I fish, I'm going to show you how to make a scraper. That's good. Hmm. Okay. Fishing. I'm gonna uh, just try to fish for a little bit and take it easy. See if I catch anything. So one of the things about this lake is it's crystal, crystal clear. The other thing about this is when the sun is above, just coming straight down, this water is bright blue. Looked like somebody photoshopped a, a ridiculous color blue on the lake. She's uh, recording underwater shots. It's rainbow trap down there, apparently. Um, I'm not getting any bites, surprisingly. But I'm enjoying it. She's pretty far out, and it's, it's shallow. So I don't know. We'll see. Maybe I'll get something. Awesome. Check out the sunset. Not even a nibble. some Pake Chunky Salsa. Pake Chunky Salsa. Learn this from my strat. It'll take a minute to ignite. Check out that chip. Is Looks that... like it burned for a while like good fire starters. Is that because of the oil? Yeah, I think so. I don't know.
So we ran out of light. We were fishing for quite a while, trying to catch something, but no good. But uh, I'm glad I'm here. It's, uh, it's always really peaceful here. I was not expecting to see uh, flint and chert all over the place up here. Just uh, random places I stopped. And it's actually pretty good stuff. But uh, on with that, I'm going to use some of that chert to uh, make the end scraper, but I'm going to do it tomorrow. We ran out of light. When we got to the, uh, the campfire here, when we got it all set up and going, there was uh, a bunch of coyotes back in the woods screaming. And the frogs started, started singing, frogs started singing in the swamp right out over there. Before I heard a bunch of splashing in the water too. It was really weird, real great there. It sounded like a deer running through the water or something. I don't know. Might be the anarchist beaver. Maybe. Doubtful. The anarchist deer swims with the beaver. <laughs> Last time I was here, uh, I really felt really, really special about this place. I was really, really enjoying myself and felt really happy. And then I got sick on the last day I was here and had to go to the hospital and all that stuff. That's in older videos. But uh, I'm really glad to be back here and feeling pretty good this time. Something about that water out there, I don't know. I mean, there's plenty of lakes around me at home, and I don't sit and stare at them like I do here. There's all kinds of bunnies running around, and I think they're called pine squirrels. Um, one threw a crab apple at me before out of that tree. It bounced off my shoulder and landed on the ground. And then he screamed like he was really angry. It was really strange. It's a different, different kind of squirrel. They look different. They make all different kinds of sounds, and they carry giant pine cones in their mouths. It looks ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> what was that? It's okay. We're safe. Don't even have to throw it at the bear. Just don't throw a bear at a banana. Don't throw a bear at a banana. But throw a bear. Do shit. <laughs> throw the banana at the bear, it might still eat you. Oh man, I'm getting tired. Sleep. Hmm. So I didn't have the tent cover on and it started raining and it hit me right on the back of my neck and my back <clears throat> while I was sleeping and it freaked me out. I was freezing cold rain. So I started yelling to Leah, get the thing, get the thing. And she just started freaking out and screaming. <laughs> she went, ah, what? <laughs> like that but I think I yelled pretty loud okay I'm going back to sleep good night it's uh, 7 o'clock in the morning I'm fishing stuff I'm try to catch something before, before Leah wakes up I like getting up early because there's a uh, Usually, absolutely nobody at the water. Hopefully I'll get something. <laughs> a little 
but uh wavy but uh no still no luck in here guess i'll try the uh there's a creek around the corner behind me and then there's another pond over there that i'm gonna try i think i would catch anything check this guy out him back. That's pretty cool. I caught him right in here on the, that bridge. Cool. First fish. Tiny guy. First fish. Yeah. That was kind of small. I've never uh, caught one of those before. I think it was a rock bass. I'm gonna try some more later. Almost back at the campsite. Ah oh, man, this place is wonderful. 360, whoa, busy now. So last night, I talked about making um, an end scraper today. So I'm gonna show you how I do that. If you're into primitive technology, primitive skill, you're definitely gonna to wanna to know how to make one of these. One of the things you want is a pretty thick piece of flint because your end scraper has to be a very um, thick flake with steep edges. So I got this yesterday while I was looking around for flint. And this is a good piece because uh, how flat this is, it'll make it easier. If I hit in right here, I should be able to get this whole flake off. So what you wanna do is support this really strong squeeze and you find a ledge that's going to provide a very steep thick flake what i'm going to have to do is just break off these corners and it, it should be about that wide Try to be very gentle. Just to shape the back end. So what I was just doing was shaping the bottom end because the back end is usually thin and then with that steep ridge at the top. Now if you compare here, it's getting pretty close. So I'm just Thinning this a little. I'm going to use a um, indirect method. All right, so now we got the basic shape. Take an antler, and push in, and flake down. How I pop the flake off there, and then they would do the next one. all the way across where I put those flakes across is a flat edge and that's what you want now it's sharp so we took this flake off here you could see where it, where it met up and that's kind of the angle you're looking for when you make these when it peels up like that you have that working edge for the hide scraping you could use it on wood you could use it on bone. You could use it on hides. These, these were one of the most important pieces of a Paleo-Indian toolkit from 12,000, 11,000 years ago. You might think it looks very unassuming and small, but this is one of their most important tools. This is how they kept themselves warm. This is how they made their clothes. This is how they shaped their tools. And this is called a end scraper. So thanks for sticking around watching us create this primitive survival tool. We'll be making more stuff like this and demonstrating how it works and why it works. And stick around. Hit that sub button, hit the thumbs up, and hit the bell icon so that you get notified when I upload because a lot of people aren't seeing it. We miss out on stuff like this. In this primitive tools episode, I'm going to show you how to make 
Paleolithic primitive spear point. I'm going to take a piece of flint that we collected from the river and nap a spear point out of it. Now, hopefully I'll get a good piece out of this. So both look okay. This one will be, this one will be easier. So I'll try this one first. Now for it to be a working spear point, it doesn't have to be much bigger than that. So when I'm doing this, I'm abrading the edges, I'm dulling the edges to make it so that when I hit on these spots that are lower, when I hit on them, it travels along this line and creates a big flake. Same thing, you would hit there and you would hit there. And you just keep doing that over and over again to thin it down. So here is a platform, and here is a platform. Those are places you want to hit. It'll follow this line. The flake will thin it down along these lines. You can see right here, this shallow area is where one of the flakes came off. Same thing with here. And you just keep doing that over and over again until it gets down to the shape and size you want. So the platform there, and the platform there. The lowest points on the rock. So I'm not going for anything too fancy because this is for use. It's starting to rain out. Kind of got a hurry now. There's some damage in here, so I got to be careful, but it's already taken shape. I don't need much more. Hopefully it stays together. So it's starting to rain, but I'm getting pretty close here. I just got to thin it down, shape this edge up a little more, and the spear point will be done. No way. Okay, I think we're good. So we got a break in the weather here. The sun came back out. And uh, we got along that far. You could see on this, this is the bottom of the rock. When I split it in half, you could see how much we've taken off. And the crystals on this line up to the crystals on that. So you could keep track of where your rock was when you're working on it. It's just a cool little thing. So we took off that much of the rock so far. And we got to thin it more. So I'm going to grind down again. I've ground all the edges so that I could see what I'm doing here. And where I, where I should hit is the low platforms. So there, and there, and there. And when you flip it over, here's a low spot. Here's a low, kind of low spot. Here's a low spot, low spot. But uh, one of the things I see on this piece is this is not such pure chert up here. And it's more brittle. So we might have a problem right along this edge here. We'll see what we could do. I'm going to use um, indirect percussion for that. So I'm going to use the indirect method, which is the issue stick under the leg hit with antler. And that allows more power to be driven into the flakes to push them off rather than trying to sit there with your wrist or with your shoulder and pushing the flake off with brute strength, you're instead just like that. We might have some problem with this. And if we do have a problem with this, then it'll just be a smaller spear point. It'll still get the job done. Doesn't need to be huge like this. It could be thin, 
or it could be short, it doesn't matter as long as it pierces and cuts. So I'm pushing the point into the copper tip and as I press in, I hit with this to get the flake off. And you do that all the way down the piece to thin it. So I hit right there. And you just do that along the whole piece. Here, there's a lot of problem areas. And I'm not sure, I'm not certain that it's not going to break. It has uh, crystals in it. These lines of crystals make a weak spot. Now, if I can't get rid of those and thin it, you see how thick it is here. I have to thin that. And I have to thin here, but there's a line of crystals in there that's going to stop the flake from traveling. And if it stops it, it could direct force down through the point instead of across and over it. And if it goes down and through, it'll snap. So when you have damage like this, there's no way to determine for sure if you're going to break it or not doing this. If you're dealing with a lot of damaged rock, which from creek rock would definitely a lot of it be damaged. You got to learn how to work around these problem areas and sometimes they fail that just happens but that's part of that's part of the process and that's part of learning and you learn how to correct these problems over time every time i fix it i learn something new every time i break it i learn something new so we're going to see what happens here now this piece does have some problem areas in it but we could probably fix it up so this one cleaned up a lot it went almost across the whole thing and look how much width that took off so when you pull it off it's way thinner what i'm going to do with this point since there's a lot of damage in here i think i'm going to go with the zigzag method so i'll take a flake off that way then i'll flip it over take a flake off that way flip it over again flake that way all the way up to the tip then i'll regrind the whole thing and see if I could fix these problem spots. Also, on this side here, I gave way more width to work with just in case this side fails, I'll still be able to get a point out of this like that. Even if I lose that much, I still have a very deadly spear point. A lot of that crystal is still in there. So we're just going to keep thinning this now. We're past the problem point. Point. This is going to be a little bit of a problem here. But I'll just get rid of that with grinding, I think. So now you can see here, it's a really funky setup. This is going to be a big problem. I'll see what I could do. I think I'm going to start at the tip. I don't want to hit too hard. Okay. Now, that what I'm doing with the zigzagging is it's setting up new places that I could hit. So now I have access to this platform which runs on that line, but it's still all funky in here. So what I'm going to do is take another flake below that platform on the opposite side. There. So we're getting really close to the finish here. I managed to fix that whole tip. Here is still a little thick, but I like to keep that area thick because it adds strength to the entire point. If the tip breaks off, I could pull it out, set it back in, and resharpen it. Thunder. But we fixed that whole tip. We got rid of all that funky stuff. There's a little bit in here that I'm not going to mess with. It runs up to here, but we don't need to. We don't need to fix that to. Um, 
make it a usable point. And I think what I'm going to do is just try to thin it a little bit right here, and then put some notches in, sharpen it up, and we're good to go. We're getting there. So I've just been zigzagging back and forth and taking the flakes off and thinning it down a little bit. And um, I'm getting to the base now. I'm going to do something called that. It's called a channel flake or a fluting flake up the point. But uh, if you want to see that, uh, go over to my Patreon and check out what I have available there. Because that will be exclusive content just for Patreon. So on my Patreon, I'm going to be doing all of my secrets and tips and um, everything I've learned within the past 14 maybe even 15 years now of doing this along with what I've learned in archaeology I want to be able to help you guys and if you guys want to be able to help me you could sign up through patreon and I'll gladly teach you this stuff I have a mentorship program on there and I have other tiers as well that you could look at and go and check that out I'll put the link It'll be in the description of the video. You could just click on the link and go and check it out. So now for the final shaping and sharpening, uh, usually I use a caribou antler stuck in a stick with some pine sap, pine pitch glue, but this has been ground down to a nub. So on the other side, I have a little stick of copper and I'm just gonna use that to finish it up. And same thing, I'm just gonna zigzag across the piece and push little tiny flakes off. You don't wanna take too much off here. So this is what I do for final resharpening. It's just pushing those little flakes off. And right there you can see I'm taking off that brown stuff. And that brown stuff is called the cortex of the rock. And the cortex is actually weak. So you want to get that off if you can. So I'm doing the same thing. I'm just zigzagging back and forth on these platforms here and making sure it keeps the right shape. So now that tip is pretty, pretty sharp. I'm going to make it go to more of a point. And a lot of this, uh, you could see the cortex is a different color than the chert. And there's a lot of cortex in there it goes right across the line here you can see it on this side this brown stuff and like I said that's weaker so um, I'm gonna leave this because otherwise it'll shorten my spear point and I don't want a short one just grind the piece again so I'm just cleaning up the base a little bit and this is a pretty good uh, fluid point. So this is an accurate um, replica of a Paleo-Indian spear point. Would have been used about 13,000 years ago, 12,000 years ago. And uh, these were used to hunt large game like a caribou. And they would put it on a atlatl dart and throw it with a spear thrower. The spear thrower was called an atlatl. And these darts would travel very, very forcefully into the animal. And then they had their food and clothes. So um, you could do all of this with just antler. You don't need the copper. You could do it with antler. It just takes a little bit more pressure to get those flakes off. As for the damage, we cleared up a lot of it. I flaked right over it, and I left the part that was very crystally in here. Like that. So all of this is crystally, but that's fine. Because it'll be sitting in the stick here. And this is the spot that we'll be thrusting or throwing. So we took this half of a spall of creek cobble and turned it into a Paleo-Indian fluted point replica. And you could see how much we thinned that down compared to what it originally was. We thinned it down to a usable spear point that's razor sharp. 
<clears throat> we um we used indirect we used pressure flaking hand pressure flaking and we used uh it's called percussion flaking which is when i was hitting with the copper you could uh alternate those methods as you learn and you'll see which works best for you i like to use all of them we finished the spear point in relatively short time so now we're going to go put it on a stick so if you want to see how I make a spear out of this, a primitive thrusting spear, uh, check out that other video that I have coming. Leave no stone unturned. So yesterday, we were looking around in the creeks and only finding little pieces like this. Um, so I drove up into the mountains a little bit, hoping to find... Church and flute. To be able to make uh, knives and spear points instead of small arrowheads. The stuff I found is good for small arrowheads so far. But I'm hoping to find some bigger, bigger pieces of church. found an outcrop of a uh, church, and I'm not sure what kind this is, but I guess I would call it Isopus. And where it is on here, you can see the line. There's a line of it right there. It's darker than the rest of it. It's just a thin line. Some of it is falling out. And it's just on a side of a road here. Yeah, that's good. Good church. Is it in limestone? It is in limestone. Yeah. Cool. Grab that. So that's cool. Did you, just, did you show them the vein? Yeah. Uh, maybe you could point at it, just so we could get a reference of where the uh, the vein actually is. That's really cool. Really cool. There's a big piece right there too. It gets thicker. Right there. Yeah. Right there. And there's some really good right there. Okay, I'm gonna turn this off for now. Let me just back up. It's just an outcrop. There's another outcrop just on the roadside again. And you can see a big, nice piece of chert right there. But uh, I'm not going to take that. I'm going to keep looking. It's all down there too, though. So there's quite a few veins in this. 
There's one running up there that's a darker flint. Right there is the darker flint. But then if you walk closer, you can see there's a really nice flint right here. All of this. But I wouldn't peck at a wall or anything. I would look on the ground for stuff that's already fallen. And that's what I'll be picking up on roadsides. But this is really cool to see for me. was driving past and I almost hit this little guy. Any of you guys give me an ID on that? I'm not going to get out of the car and mess with him because I don't know a thing about snakes, but he's just chilling in the road. I'm in my car. That's a cool looking snake. Pulled off at a roadside place that had some picnic grills, so she's gonna go cook and I'm gonna go take a look down at the creek, see if there's any chart down there. This is pretty nice. There's just an explosion that came up from the... Uh... So what you got? So, I got, I saw this, this sticking out in the creek. And I hit it, and it was limestone on this side. I hit it again, and there's little bits of chert in there. So I flipped it over one more time, and I hit, and there is a big vein of chert going through the middle of this. So I might be able to get something out of there. It looks like it goes straight through. Cool. And then this, I knocked off a piece down there. It's mostly limestone, but there's some of that nice blue chert in there. And it's blocky. <coughs> and I'm wondering if the artifacts around here are having lines go through them like that, and if they actually use pieces this big or, or not. I don't know this area. But I'm hungry. I'm making lunch. What are you doing? <laughs> oh, it's good. Is this hot? Hot. I just want the clams. So I knocked this piece off of here. And inside is a little tiny bit of chert, but I think this piece has some more. So I'm going to try to knock just this piece off. It's very glossy at certain spots. It's going to be loud as This whole piece is chert. If I could split it. So the dark stuff is chert. But it's going to be hard to get to. And the rest is limestone? Yep. Watch yourself. There we 
go. That's a good, pretty good piece. Yep, I'll take all this. Hey, look at that one. Yep. That one below it is a little long. Yep. Let's see if I can do this without cutting myself. Yeah, I'll take all of this. This will work. I mean, it's got a lot of limestone in it, but it's also got a lot of chert in it, so it will it will make a knife. You want to knock the limestone off? Yeah, I'm going to knock this whole piece and this ball it all down okay. as much as I can. Cool. I'm slowly taking off pieces like this mm -hmm. that I could work into blades. All these little flakes and stuff I'm going to take for spear points and knives and um, as long as they don't have too much limestone. But most of this is, I could use it, surprisingly. Oh, check this out. That's like a kajillion year old snail. Oh, it's a fossil. Cool. It's some kind of bug. I should actually take that too. It's pretty awesome. Man, that is cool. Huh. It had freeze damage in it, so I managed to split it. Wow. So I'm going to take this whole piece, because this all looks good to me. Ow. That is sharp, Flint. <laughs> Flint is sharp, yes. <laughs> Yep, this is all coming with me. Sweet. Yep. Yep. Man, look at that. Right here is a bunch of really, really old fossils. That's really cool. I could feel that it was a shell. It's actually lifted out of the rock. Really cool. So, that, uh, fossil that was here. I wanted it. So I busted it <laughs> off. And I'm going to take it. And I'm taking all of this because it's all good. Well, every one of these is a spear point or arrowhead. So I'm taking all of it. It's right below a modern quarry and mining facility. Okay. See, this is all that limestone. Yeah, that black limestone. Here's some coming up. So that mine was creepy. Looked like it was collapsing too. It reminded me of the uh, old mine shaft from what's the movie, The Great Outdoors. Oh yeah. 
the bear. Yes. A bald headed bear! <laughs> big bear! Big bear chase me! Big bear! What? Big bear chase me! So there's some storms coming in, and it's going to be raining a lot, and we decided to come here to this lake. Uh, there's some big pavilions and primitive camping, so we're going to wait the storm out here. It's really pretty, and I really like it here, so I'm staying here. So even here, there's rocks with chert mixed in, uh, ants, and here's a like a gray blue, and here's like a light white blue. So all different colors. So this was our campsite last night. We're at a uh, campground. It's pretty nice. The campsites are fairly private. Each has a, a little bit of brush in between them, which is nice. And the sun is finally coming out. Blue sky. A lot of the clouds are supposed to clear up. Alright, so last night it poured out, and we stayed at the campground here, and it's really pretty even though it's cloudy and rainy, and but um, I'm getting hungry, I need some meat, we can't hunt, we can't hunt, we can't fish, um, so we're gonna go into town, it's like an hour away, and uh, get some meat, recharge batteries for the cameras, and um, just some other supplies and then come back here for another night. And we're gonna do a, there's a big hill right up over here that has a hiking trail on it that I'd like to hike today if it doesn't start raining too bad. I mean, it's drizzling a little right now, but it 
it's not bad, it's more misty than anything. So, gotta go get some kind of food. pit stop here. I just happened to see it when I was driving past. French War, 1757. Here English troops guided by Indians sought a sulfur deposit site, Great Sulfur Spring, open to the public in 1820. There's a farmer's market over there. There's a plaque here. Uh, it was something weird when I pulled up. It stunk. It smelled like gas. Great White Sulphur Spring, Indian Tribes Healing Water. Caused Resort Era, 1800 to 1940. The origin of village and official seal. And then there's something here. So I guess this is the, the entryway of where they found the spring. So this is actually the spring right here, right at the road. And that was what I was smelling when I pulled up. It just smells like really strong natural gas. Thanks, bad. So there's actually flint in the spring when they built the wall. Oh look, there's a big piece of flint right there. Oh my god. Thanks. Oh god. So that stinks really, really bad. But supposedly, supposedly this is a uh, healing. Oh uh, yeah, yuck! I don't know about that. Man. I kind of wish you guys could smell this. It's uh, different. Ugh. Ugh. Okay, I'm leaving. Ugh. So, gonna have to agree with Jeremy, one wild crafter. Maple syrup on everything. Yes. Probably more. We'll see. But yes, I agree. One of the things I wanted to talk about was something a little disturbing that I already knew about and I read in a uh, academic report. And I'll record as I go along, but in, um, in bluestone gravel, especially in this area. Um, they actually chop up chert. And um, in this academic report, it talks about how modern humans do not value chert 
anymore. And uh, Chert was one of the things that allowed us to become who we are today. And it was a very valuable, very precious tool source. And, uh, I don't know if it should just be blasted into gravel like this. So this is more of what I was talking about. That they just blast into chert for, uh, gravel. And it's mixed in with bluestone. And they just destroy it. I don't really think that's a, uh, unending resource for people. And we're just using it to drive our cars on. Which isn't very safe to begin with because it's sharp and it pops your tires. It popped mine before. They told me that something must have stabbed into the tire and popped it. Because there was nothing stuck in there, just stabbed. Sounds like it was the flint. It was the flint at the campsite. Filling in with sand. Not razor sharp flint, that doesn't make any sense. doesn't work so good if they're facing you. What the hell? What was that? Never heard that sound in the woods before. It's a bird, I think. No, that is a squirrel. Wow, I've never heard a squirrel make that sound. What? Holy crap. What? I was watching a great blue heron viciously murder a fish. The great blue heron cares nothing for your human rules. potato skin on my head. There's a reason. You'll see. Here on a creek, you could hear it. And I got a bag full of flint from down in there. 
there's Leia and this feels really special This is the creek I'm getting my chart out of. I'm standing on a block and I'll show you right here is chert. This is not. This is chert. See that? Chert. Not chert. So here's some more. You see this vein running through? That's chert. That's chert. And the outside of it, this stuff here is limestone. And the shinier stuff is the chert. So getting to this is the trick. I don't have much room here, but there's chert in this creek. So the way that I find chert is I look on um, geological maps and I look for like a limestone bedrock and usually in limestone is some chert and in this area there is a lot of chert and right now we're in between a major river and a creek. So I'm going to take a look. Um, we looked on like a Google Earth and um, zoomed down in on the creek and you you can see that there's a big rock, rock, big rocky shore. So whenever there's a big rocky shore where you know there's limestone, there might be chert. And that's what we're going to go look for right now. tiny tiny piece of chert right here that's a good sign and I could actually make a little little tiny arrowhead out of that but I'm not gonna I found another tiny little piece and this might be Onondaga chert and one of the ways you could tell if it's Onondaga or not is when you break it open it smells like oil. So we'll give that a try and see if that's what it is. Pick that up. And that is not Onondaga. But that's a nice chert. It's nice and shiny and has sparkles in it. So, oop. I'm going to take the flake that I took off, make sure I don't leave it. Put it in my pocket. So I just wanted to point out something pretty cool here. I wonder if this would work as a fishing hook. The thorns. There's thorns all over this tree, sharp as can be. And I put this branch up and I wasn't thinking and I felt the thorn. I put this branch up so I could get past. I'm not going to leave it up because that will whip somebody in the face if they, if they try, try to come through. Because it's just hanging on that thorn. It's like a snare trap. It'll swing down and whack somebody real good. So I'm not going to do that. So this is no good. Especially on a river like this, there's bald eagles flying around, there's hawks, there's falcons. They'll take this to make a nest. 
this string that you fishermen left, they'll take that and they'll hang themselves in their own nests. So I'm going to find, there's a plastic bag right over there, and I'm going to take that plastic bag, pick up all this crap that this idiot left here, and all this stuff behind me, there's worm, a worm container, two water bottles, dog food, spinner bait, and another, ba another thing of worms and some cans, and I'm just going to pick it up and bring it out with me. But this, this is unacceptable. Don't do this. Don't do this. I found shirts. I thought I just saw some too, but I lost it. It's the black and the blue. How big? Tiny. In limestone. Okay. So found a little piece. This this outside is limestone, it's no good. But on the other side, a very, very tiny bit of chert. And you could clearly see the difference in material. So you could see where the chert is in the limestone. So I can't use this piece. I'm going to leave it, but I'm going to pick up this crap. I feel like it doesn't even make a dent that I'm cleaning up after these, these people because they're just gonna come back, see somebody cleaned it, and then they're gonna be like, oh, I could just throw my here again. Somebody else will pick it up. No, pick up your What the hell's wrong with you? Look at this, it's gonna fall right into the river. It's PVC. You melted PVC and it's gonna flow into the river and poison the fish, which then poisons the birds and poisons us and God damn it. Now, I'm not familiar with the rock in this location, so I brought a mini sledge. And I see a piece here that looks like it might possibly be something, but I have no idea, so I'll just test it. And uh, the other thing you want to be careful of is when I've been doing this and flipping over rocks, sometimes there are little snakes underneath, so be careful. And spiders. That's limestone. So, that is no good. And I see another thing over here, behind me, that does have spiders on it. That might be, this looks like limestone too, but we'll see. And it's limestone. So, two different kinds of limestone. So this is also probably limestone. One of the things I wanted to tell you about limestone is it's very brittle, but if you're in some kind of survival situation and you need something to cut, limestone will cut. This is very, very sharp. Almost as sharp as flint, but it's easily, it, it dulls real easy. But if you ever need it, there's your knife. It's limestone. It'll work. So if you want to get really good at napping, nap limestone, because even I can't nap limestone too well. But if you want to get good, try limestone. So I just busted this little piece, and it smells real strong of oil. This is Onondaga chert. This is the first chert 
I ever napped. I got it free at a nap in. Just a piece about this size. I made a little tiny arrowhead and I gave it to my dad. Can I smell it? Yeah. It doesn't last very long, but... It does smell like oil. And petroleum. Mm-hmm. So that's cool. I've been looking for Anadagua for since forever. Little glacial cobble of it. I will make a little arrowhead out of this because I love this stuff. It smells like oil. It's so weird. Yay! Finally, a little piece of Anadagua. I've been looking for this forever. Seriously, even just a little piece. Like, man, that's the first stuff I ever napped. 12, 13, 14 years ago. Oh, man. Okay, I'm getting closer to finding it, at least. I could probably just ask other nappers where it is, and they would just tell me, and then I wouldn't have fun doing this, and I'm not going to do that, so. But if you want to give me hints, hints, general location, like 50 mile radius, uh, do that. Yes, do that. Especially for the Anadagua. It's another little piece right here. That looks more like the Isopus. So, some of the chert, like really, it runs in such a thin vein like that, that I know the natives used it, but I have no idea how they did. I was not expecting to find Anadagua here, not even a little. So I'm really surprised, like I'm really, now, now I gotta look for every little piece because I love it. And I'll just make little tiny arrowheads like this and I'll just like smell them. That's not weird or anything. Here's another piece. This might be more Anadagua. So, it might be, let's see. And it is. Sniff it. Sniff the rock. They also call it, um, they actually call it oil chert. Let me pick that flake up. Um, because it smells like that, I, I've heard people call it oil chert. But that's pretty cool. So here's where the creek lets out. And there's a bunch of rock piles down there that somebody stacked. Kind of looks cool. I know people don't like those, but whatever. And I've noticed that on this corner, there's a little bit more chert coming from that direction. So it's not coming down river, it's coming from the creek. If you look right here, there's a little, little, little nugget of churn in this whole big rock. So here's another piece. And this is just a, uh, looks like glacial, glacial cobble just rolled around, left by the glaciers when they were here. So you can see here, there's a clear difference between the limestones, the giant scary spiders. I don't know what that was, it was black. I'm kidding about giant, they're not really giant. But you can see the shininess compared to limestone. This looks like there's some limestone in it, so we'll give it a crack and see what happens. See, that is limestone. So this piece here is limestone, and then this piece here is chert. But it looks really weathered, so I'm not sure that I'll be able to get a good piece off of that. Let me put this here. Um, try again. I'll try this edge. 
this time to see. To show you. So it's chert, but it's not very good. That's still limestone. Yep. But that's a higher quality limestone. So this stuff you probably could nap. You'd have to be really good. I don't like to work it because it's really tough and it's really brittle. I think this is chert. Saucy. Oh man, it's tough chert if it is. Still limestone. Thought it was chert, it's limestone. Unless, try more. There's the chert. Limestone, chert. All right, so I've, I've scoured over pretty good here. This is more fishing line. Let me grab that. You guys, like, if you go out in the wild doing the stuff and you see fishing line, just pick it up. It, you know, birds. This really, like, I keep seeing bird nests with this in it, and those baby birds get hung in them. You see the baby bird hanging out of the nest by the wire, dead. Just pick it up if you see it. A lot of people, like, they lose their line in the water, and it's not intentionally thrown here, but they lose their line, and it washes up. So just pick it up if you see it. So anyway... I've scoured over pretty good. I found a couple little pieces of the Onondaga chert, which I'm really excited for, because that means I'm getting closer to where it's coming from, which I don't know which way, which means I have to go at, probably this way. Probably this way. So I'll go down that way and look there, and then I'm gonna go down that way, and then I'm gonna go down that way because I just found Onondaga. I've been looking for Onondaga for 12 years. I found a piece this big. Yes! Oh. <laughs> so about an hour, and I found the tiniest piece of Onondaga ever. Yeah! Also, um, somebody left their big bag, a big grocery bag, so I threw all the in it. And I'm just gonna carry it out and get out of here and head elsewhere. But now I'm keeping my eyes peeled for little tiny pieces of Onondaga. Because I like the smell. Don't be weird. <laughs> I wonder if I had a sled instead of walking here if I could just slide the whole way down to the river it's so wet you probably could slide all the way down if you had a sled it might hurt a little <laughs> it might hurt a little bit but that's okay <laughs> look at the rocks you hit your on that thing going down. Ow! <laughs> it cut through here. Mugwort, jewelweed, burdock, garlic mustard, Dan's rocket, some kind of honeysuckle, Jimmy Creeper. Now this, that is the paw print of a wild teddy bear from Toys R Us. They're extinct now.
of every piece of plastic back here. It's too much. I guess just do what you can. Uh, to me, the most important thing is the fishing line. Grab the fishing line if you see it. Keep your places beautiful. You don't want to see trash everywhere. You just don't. Who wants to see it? I just decided to do a quick pit stop here. This is the uh, Erie Canal. It's got some cool rock formations and all. And I just figured I would stretch my legs a little bit and walk around. Just get some fresh air. Got warmer out. The sky's nice and blue. The water's actually clear ish. I'm just gonna poke about a little bit. Get out the road. What are you hissing at? What are you hissing at? Don't be in the road. Get out the road. Don't hiss at me. I'm trying to help you. I'm giving you I'm giving you life advice and your baby. Yeah, yeah hiss. Yeah, you gonna hiss? <laughs> <laughs> Get out of the road. Okay, be safe. Be safe. See the baby? You gotta be safe for the baby. Okay, I'm leaving now. Oh shit, it's gonna attack me. Attack goose. Attack goose. in this neighborhood here and happened to see this little creek here and uh, I went down let's see where did I go down I'm sorry for the wind I'm using my phone at the moment I just came down right here and uh, in this rock is more church there's a whole bunch right there a whole bunch right there you can see the darker stuff is the chert the lighter stuff is the limestone um, I'm pretty sure this was put here but down there is a different kind of chert in those little cobbles and it's not as good it's a uh, very very brittle very shale like so I'm just gonna check it out a little bit and I'll get back to you if I could you know knock a good flake off and see what I could come up with Okay, so I'm just testing random rocks here and hitting, and I hit one here, and it's a limestone, but it looks, it looks like it'll nap, so I'm going to bring this one home. It's not very ringy, but, I don't know, I don't know. The other thing with all this is there's tons of sand fleas coming into these creeks. You can see them jumping away from my foot there. I hate these things. They bite. Quartet. Which I don't want right now. Yeah, that's a higher quality limestone. I'm not going to take this though, but you could practice napping on this if you knew. And this is in creeks everywhere. Alright, guess I'm going to head out. Limestone Creek. I saw this and I pulled off. They had a uh, girls here. But this water is like. Wow. I'm still looking for. Sure. But this location is just really, really beautiful. And there's like nobody here. 
I don't get it. That is Esopus Church. And right next to it is a piece I could use. So we've just been driving around and stopping at different areas where the creeks come through and let out and looking at the rocks and just picking up any little bits of flint that might be from cobble or uh, glacial cobble, glacial rolling around and I don't really see too much here but this is what we've been doing. We've just been stopping and looking and enjoying the areas. I'm not finding too, too much flint so far, but I'm really enjoying myself. I'm having a great time out here. I think it's a robin's egg. Get that for us without sinking? Nah, I'm sinking. Yeah. yeah. Let's get out of here. Just a quick pitch, pit stop. There's a giant dog down here. <laughs> I hope it's a dog. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know tracks. I know flint and chert though. Oh. Man, this tracks are massive. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're next to people tracks, so I'm assuming somebody just brought a bull mastiff down here. I think the flint is over there and we need a boat, and I don't have a boat. So now we need to make a boat. Is there a tree? Take like a week. Where the hell's the flint? Is that the flint? That's not the flint, that's a leaf. After staring at something like this for so long, you get something called rock blind and you start to get really dizzy. I found more underwears than I have chert. What the hell is going on? Cigarettes and underwears. That's different. Just laying here is blue weird colored really rough kinda kinda churdy stuff yep there's some stuff here it's uh very small though flip that I'm having trouble finding larger stuff. I can't do anything with something that small. I can make a something called a there we go. Something called a bird point. But even this is rough here and the only good spot is there, so that's no good. 
That's unfortunate. I mean, there's little, little, little chips. Okay. Maybe I'll find something eventually. Like, really, this is harder than it than it appears. And uh, I know I have some viewers that get really discouraged. But, like, look at what I'm finding. I mean, it's small. That's the piece I was just holding. And there's... There's not much, and it's it, it is re, it is really difficult to find. So when you find a piece that's big, you are very blessed. I'll get back to you if I find anything. Here's a bigger chunk. This piece I'm going to take. I might be able to make something out of that. As far as I can see, it's not worked. So this should not be an artifact of any kind. And the source has got to be somewhere nearby. I I'm seeing more and more of just rolled river rock. It's really shiny. I like the color, too. It's got a crack running through it. But I I'm not finding anything big. I need scuba gear or something. Get down under that water. What'd you find? I might be able to make a spear point out of this. It's got limestone here, but the rest of this is chert. And this is really pretty. more of it right here. This is really pretty stuff. It's blue. I need a bigger piece though. This is what I like making now. So those little pieces. There's not the little pieces. Ah. Uh -huh. Bigger piece. Thank you. Bigger, slightly bigger. It's like gray blue. Yeah, grayish blue. Should be all around here. Like some nugget. Yep. It's another little piece right there. Here. This is in its uh That's a, a vein of it, but it's all decayed. Yeah. Not decayed, but cool color. Weathered. Oh look. Man, that's so shiny. I'm not seeing any of the blue down here. What is this? Test it. Looks tough. Uh-uh. Sure. Lots of limestone though. Yeah. So I might be able to split it right here. See that line? Yeah. So if I hit it right there, hard enough, it should take all, mo most of the limestone off. We'll give it a try later. Right here. Oh, oh nice. This is it. All right, I'm getting bit up. We're losing light. I got at least one big piece. We'll come back tomorrow or go somewhere else tomorrow. 
I wash this off at the car, see what I got. There's so many. Fish to shop. It's like crawfish massacre. Oh my God. This is the first big piece I found. I'm not sure how much good is going to be in there, but we'll see. So once you get to the level of uh, like 25,000 plus hours of flint napping, you can take a flake like this. And this is when you're a master. Don't try this when you first start. You hold it like this in the leather. You take your tool, in this case I'm using copper. You really carefully line it up. This is really nerve wracking. And then you have a completely finished point. Pressure flaked. The edges are ground and ready to be hafted. This point is ready to hunt with. Now, usually, when you do that method, you clip your finger and you clip your fingernail really bad. But it's worth it to get a point of this quality from a flake that quickly. And that's how a master flint napper flint naps. Flint. Flint? Flint. Chert. Yeah. I know what I'm talking about, trust me. So we're going to take a look at some more creeks again, and uh, I got Miss Leah a coffee so that she could move because she wasn't moving, and there's the coffee in her hand, and now there's a smile on her face, and she can move. So now, go carry all those rocks to the car for me. You see all those? I got you your coffee. Let me finish it. Okay. So one of the things about limestone is it is nappable. If you need to, and you can't find chert, you're ever in a survival situation, you can make arrowheads and tools and cutting material out of this, and I want to show you. find a piece that's um, fairly workable. Let me see if I could uh, smack it off with a caribou antler. So let's say, I'll put this right here. Let's say that this is what you want to make your arrowhead out of. So what you would do, I use that to knock the flake off. Now this is going to be more brittle than most flints, like it, it will snap. This is like maybe a one or two time use tool. Say I hit it and it snapped, but you can take flakes off of this. It's hard to. And I'll just try to do this real fast just to show you. I took flakes off there. Flake, flake, flake. Flake, flake, flake. And uh, with my shoulder, it's kind of hard for me to flake something this tough, but 
I'll show you like if you need an arrowhead this will work you just got to be able to thin it down I'll try to do it like this and I guess we'll just speed the rest of this up I kind of need a hammer stone, that's what I need. And you have to really put some force into this stuff, but as you can see, it does, it does flake. There we go. Took that big chunk off. And now it's going to start to look more like something you could attach to an arrow or use as a cutting tool. And actually, what I'm going to do, just because I'm not doing the whole process of making an arrowhead here, Try to cut a small piece of leather and see how this does. I've never actually tested this before. Gonna need Leah to pull it with one hand and have her fill them with the other. So here's the edge I just napped. It's not as sharp as flint, but it cuts. Kind of. Got to pull a little more than that. So a little bit more effort. It's not as sharp. It's not as sturdy. It's brittle. But this took me a few seconds to make and I could cut through tanned hide. So if you need to cut through to skin an animal, this little tool will work. It's way easier to cut through skin than hide. I mean, it's it's tanned, so. And limestone is everywhere. Limestone is everywhere. Almost every rock you see along here. Like it's way more abundant. Is limestone. I mean, I could smack almost any one of these. Here, take a look. This rock here. I can already see it's got a cutting edge. Limestone. Sharp. It'll dull fast, but it'll work. As compared to really high quality Onondaga just lying here. I guess that's Onondaga. That's what people are telling me. The mottled blue and gray. Just, just real quick for a uh, comparison. We'll try this. I'll just make a little bit of an edge on this. Just a tiny one. Um, I'll put this on this rock so I don't forget it. Now I'll try to cut a piece of leather with this. I'll have Leah do the same thing. Just pull tight right there. A little closer because I don't want to cut too much. It's the edge. Yeah, that's way easier. Way easier. Just a little demo. Wanted to show you, you can use limestone. If you can't find chert, limestone's everywhere. Any creek. Okay. And now I'm tired. Have a coffee. Yeah. <laughs> so I wanted to give that demonstration. If you needed to make an arrowhead and you don't have chert, that will penetrate 
not as good, but it will kill. If you put that on an arrow or a spear and you need to hunt, that'll work. It'll also cut. It's just a little bit more effort and you might want to want to make the edge a little uh, a little more refined than I did if you're working limestone. Um, I've made a few limestone points and it's really tough to flake the way I just was. So I usually use a different method, but I'll leave that up to you guys to experiment with if you want to. Um, I'm pretty happy with the chert that I have found here. It's sharp as you can see. And uh, we're gonna head down the creek and look for more uh, bigger pieces, like that one that I found that I split in half. That is perfect. Uh, they told me that is called, I asked in a couple of the Facebook groups and they told me it is called Onondagua. I'm not entirely sure that's what it is because it doesn't have that certain oily smell. Ooh, I, smell. Uh, I have to crack into it more to see if I do smell it, but there were pieces here that did have that smell. So we're going to keep looking. So here's a uh, public access area to a, to a creek that I know has, or at least had chert on it a few years ago. And I walked right down here and I started seeing it. There's some right here. And at the time I found some um, kind of coarser grained, darker black chert that I believe is a uh, Snake Hill, Snake Hill shirt. There's a lot of rocks here. Yep, it was over by the water where I found the most of it. The stuff that I found was a, uh, like a dark black outside. Looks like they push stuff around quite a bit. Oh, there's tadpoles. There's a lot of tadpoles. See them? There's a whole bunch of tadpoles just in this puddle. This is it. Did you find it? Yeah. Come over here. So I remembered it, it had a black, a black look to it. Yep. And I hit it right here. Oh, look at that. And this is a, uh, this is pretty pure chert. Nice. So I'm gonna take this whole thing, flake included. And that's what you're looking for, is something that looks like that. There's a little frog hiding his head. He's like, if I hide my head, nobody can see me. They're everywhere in these pools. There's so many tadpoles. Oh my gosh. Tadpole city. This one has some cool banding on it. Here's that gray stuff. And an ant. Hello, buddy. Let's take that piece. What you got? I have a gift of blue. Oh, nice. Really nice. I mean, it's a little damaged, 
I'll be able to get stuff out of that. But that's the biggest piece of the blue we found. Yep. God, look at these. Yep. That's nice. This used to go right to the river and they plowed up a huge wall. See more blue. So I don't know what they're doing here. So there seems to be a mix here. Uh, some of this looks like some of the darker Norman skill to me, as well as uh, light blue isopus, some grainy, crystally blue stuff. That's green. So I might be finding Norman scale river cobble. Look at this color. This is what we found so far. Yeah. It's like gray. Yeah. See this giant black piece? Yeah, I don't know. Here, hold the camera. Let me test it. Yep. This piece? Yeah. Looks like. I mean, it looks like it's got a lot of quartz in there. There's this piece. I don't want to mess with this too much. See, the problem is. Yeah, it's a just lot that of little. stuff is just that thin vein. Limestone. Landslide. Be careful doing this. Rock slide. Be careful doing this. Leah is helping a turtle who is stuck in the road. He was just sitting there. He was crawling that way, but ever so slowly. And people are flying down these roads, so I put my hazards on and she went out and helped them. Always help turtles. Stopping to make some uh, clam chowder for lunch. New England clam chowder. Leah's getting a fire started. Easy right, way. Over, right over that way is a waterfall, and I'll show you that in a little bit. We got a cool lighter. This thing is like a blowtorch. Yeah, that's great. It just doesn't turn off when you let go of the button. It keeps going. Oh, I collapsed my little. Oh. Leah couldn't get the fire going, so I got my uh, master bushcraft pouch here with my ferro rod and my flint. I also have a hand-forged steel striker that I'm not going to be able to use at this angle, so I'll use the power rod. You're a master bush crafter. Done. <laughs> That's how you know you're the best. Master. A nice little park here. A couple girls. I'm sure we cut that out. Cut that out. So the secret to a good uh, New England clam chowder. Clam chowder. It's a pinch of cayenne and some Parmesan cheese. We'll wait for that to finish cooking. I'm hungry. It's got clams and potatoes and a milky broth that's soon to be cheesy broth. This is the part that nobody ever shows. That's <laughs> true. That's how you clean a cast iron pan. Just water and a sponge. And then it's good to lick. You could just lick it. Oh wait, you gotta add more water first. Then, rinse. Then you rinse it. There you, go. You, you can see her reflection and how clean that pan is. <laughs> you see that? Look, perfect reflection. She polished the pan.
Ich glaube, das ist to the next spot. Still seeing Usopus? Yeah. And you got enough of that, right? Yep. Yeah. Steer tracks over here. Yeah. And some kind of canine. Oh, there's bigger fish. Little school. It's still just the east of this stuff. Yeah. Like mostly limestone with a little bit of chert. I just saw a little bit of it. Just east of us here. Okay. Don't even know if I could use it, so I don't want to overload on it. So here's a uh, shale outcropping on the river, and it looks like chert, and it would fool me, it used to fool me, but it's very crumbly. It just snaps, and you can't really use it. And most of this here is all shale. I'll show you on another piece. Looks like flint. And it just, I could flake it with my hand. I just don't want to cut myself, so I'm being careful. It like comes off in these sheets almost. It's 
think it's just layer upon layer. It's a secret little cave in front of you. Mushroom. It looks well past its prime. I think that's Dryad Saddle. Uh, it's got another name. Oh, I can't remember. Pheasant Tail? Maybe? What are these guys? Don't know. I do not know very many mushrooms, unfortunately. If that's Dryad Saddle, it would be edible. But, you never want to eat a mushroom unless you're 2,000% sure you know what it is. And like I said, it's well past its prime. It's probably so buggy and rotted. Cool to see though. Alright, I guess I'm climbing that. Wish me luck. <laughs> These are some of the old farm buildings. And there are... Is that an alpaca or is that a llama? I think it's an alpaca. It's this little... puff tail. <laughs> Hello. Alpacas are guardian animals and may spit if they feel aggressive. It's usually what I do. <laughs> oh man. Where's all the sheep today? They look so Scott little. Itchies. Yeah. They do, they look so much smaller and skinnier. Yeah, they don't care. Probably feels good with how warm it is today, though. I think they're being He's got super by itches. Them. Looks like they're being bothered by bugs. Yeah, he was just rubbing his head on the ground. I'll get them snacks. Nom, nom, nom. Hi. What are you doing? Just got an itch. <laughs> Alright, let's leave him be. Alright. Goodbye. Have a good dinner. Enjoy. This is some of the biggest plantain I have seen. Oh my god, I'm used to it being this size. Look at these. It's huge. It's broadleaf plantain. So that's a uh, edible medicinal. It's good on bug bites. Hey, baby. Hey. Go ahead. She's waiting for you. Come on, Pat. <laughs> Come on. Oh my goodness, look at this guy. Hey, Pat. What the hell? They can be dangerous. Coyotes are so skittish. I mean, they could carry off a chihuahua. Maybe exhibiting bold behavior. Yeah, if you see a coyote exhibiting bold behavior, that's weird. That's unusual. Coyotes are so skittish. Old thing. Yeah, what is this? An old thing. An old thing. That's my expert archaeological opinion. Be careful. I 
Old I'd farm. say it was uh, probably ceremonial purposes. A ceremonial purposes? Yeah, these gears might mean something spiritual. That's your archaeological opinion? Yep. Here. The ground is shaking as I'm walking on it because there's nothing below it. Oh, it's, it's roots. that eroded? It's roots. Alright, we hold shit together, trees. You're doing a fine job. Visitors, welcome. Can you poke your head in? Cool. Anybody in there? No? Oh, look at this. Wow. Oh, I guess they do demonstrations. That's awesome. Wow. I'm a sucker for... Oh, yeah, my God, look at the spider in there. I'm a sucker for these old bottles. Use safety goggles. It's got a little hat with a feather on it. Mm -hmm. Kind of like a little train conductor's hat. Yes, return tools to where you found them. I'm not even going to touch the tools. This is amazing. I have not seen one with this many. You know. This is so cool. Oh man. Like that? Oh, I can't see it. That is awesome. Is this a museum back here? Scout 45 bus. 45.4 miles long. Yes, they do scout stuff in here too, which is also awesome. Oh, you can't really see. Sorry. Children's Creek in Dutch. I can't. Let's go. She's true. Oh, I only got a minute of battery left. That is too bad. Oh. Oh, this is all reconstruction. What's that? What do you use that for? Everything. Antler and stuff? I have sharpened my tools. Just a little spinning. The copper tools? Yep. Or the uh, antler? The antler too. You just turn it, turn it on for a second, you hold the antler, turn the antler and it sharpens it. It's good to go again. Cool. Alright, I'm gonna run out of battery. We gotta get out of here. Anyway, it's, it's, hello. Okay. Alright, we'll get back with you in a little bit. So, this is where I get my uh, my favorite flint, and uh, I have the landowner's permission to be here. But I want to show you what good flint breaks like. And I'll show you. I just make spalls. 
like that. And that will be a knife. And I try to do that as much as I can on a piece. So that it's easier to bring home. It's getting dark. It was a beautiful sunset just now. And I'm on my way back home. I got a good maybe four, four and a half hour drive ahead of me. And about 400 pounds of flint.